Today we're going to take all libraries and put them on the stack. Well, hello there, random person on the internet, and you heard me right. Today's deck casts both players' libraries all at once. But first, here are some cards that are vaguely related to the game plan. Not like they are in this deck, but you can get them at cardkingdom.com, the sponsor of this video. Check them out, link is in the description. Now, let's cast some libraries. Ooh, and we start off with a risky opening hand right away. No red mana, but if we draw one, it's perfect. Otherwise, we're majorly screwed. But hey, you gotta risk it to get the biscuit, right? Play a land. And see what our opponent is up to. Planes, pass. Ooh, that's not a red source, but I guess it can find one. Abundant Harvest lets us choose land or non-land, then reveal cards from the top of our library until we find the chosen type and put it in our hand. Ooh, that's uh, that's awkward. Opponent plays a swamp. Youthful Valkyrie, so they are black white angels. And there we go. One turn too late, but we still take it. Play everybody's favorite wall of text. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. First chapter, create a goblin shaman token that creates a treasure when it attacks. Opponent plays a righteous Valkyrie. Youthful Valkyrie gets a counter because an angel enters the battlefield. Swings for two and we draw another fable. Second chapter triggers. Discard up to two cards and draw that many cards. Honestly, dealing three to everything doesn't look too good against our opponent, so let's discard Brotherhood's End and the Forest. Ooh, these are some good hits. Now we have double red to cast Chandra Torch of Defiance. Minus her to deal 4 damage to Righteous Valkyrie. No blocker, so we can attack with the Goblin, create a treasure, and we even have mana open to protect our Chandra if they attack it. Land, another Righteous Valkyrie, puts a counter on the Youthful Valkyrie, attacks Chandra. Yeah, we kinda need her for next turn, so Fading Hope, bounce the Valkyrie, scry one. Well, I guess we keep another Fading Hope on top, draw it for turn. Fable of the Mirror Breaker flips into Reflection of Kiki Jiki, and I think we're just gonna empty our hand here. Minus Chandra to add two mana. Fable of the Mirror Breaker number two creates a goblin and then play Invasion of Ergamon, a battle that creates a treasure and lets us draw a card if we discard a card when it enters the battlefield. It has five defense counters and flips into a creature, but we pretty much only need it for the treasure. Let's decline discarding a card and use Fading Hope to clear the way for our goblin. Oh my god, well, that certainly stays on top. We could spend our treasures to get Yorion into a hand, but we might want to keep them in case we get the chance to combo off next turn. Opponent plays a land, recast Righteous Valkyrie and the Youthful Valkyrie. Now let's draw the star of the show. Itali Primal Conqueror, a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven trample elder dinosaur that when it enters the battlefield, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they hit a non-land card. You may cast any number of spells from among the cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. Plus Chandra to add mana. Cast Itali. Let's see what we can hit. He's a glorious resurrector. Sure. And this cute little kitten. Let's not worry about this one and hope our opponent doesn't as well. Place a land. And a Valkyrie Harbinger. At the beginning of each end step, if you gain 4 or more life this turn, create a 4-4 angel token with flying and vigilance. Sure. Rose the youthful Valkyrie. Gains 5 life, attacks down Chandra, end of turn they create an angel token. Oh boy, they got quite the army over there. Not that it matters though. Use Reflection of Kiki Jiki to create a token copy of a non-legendary creature we control. That token sacrifices itself at the beginning of the next end step and... Yeah, I think uh, we're gonna completely pop off now. Second fable flips into reflection of Kiki Jiki as well. Make a hasty copy of it just in case. So since our opponent let us untap with it, uh, Displacer Kitten is a completely messed up card. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, exile up to one target non-land permanent you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Um, yeah, you can probably imagine what's about to happen now. If we cast this Abundant Harvest, we can blink our Itali to trigger its ability again. And since we have two kittens, we can blink this inversion of Ergamon to create a treasure as well. Itali re-enters the battlefield, trigger on the stack. Another Gisa, sure, and an expressive iteration, which is a non-creature spell, so our kittens can blink Itali and the battle again. Create a treasure, Itali hits. 
Oh wow, two creatures. This place I is the only non-Itali creature spell in the deck, so it should be easy to find something to get the combo started again here. Expressive iteration. There we go. Put one card in our hand, one on the bottom of our library and extra invasion of Zendikar to cast it this turn. Abundant harvest for a non-land card. Ooh, the third kitten. <laughs> Almost fizzled here. Anyways, cast invasion of Zendikar. Blink Itali, invasion of Ergamon and Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Fable creates a goblin, invasion creates a treasure, lets us discard this land to draw another land, sure. Itali hits, invasion of Ergamon and the Giada triggers the kittens, blink our stuff again, create another goblin, discard the land, oh no, no, there's no way we fizzle anymore. Itali triggers again, expressive iteration and Valkyrie Harbinger. Blink our stuff, discard the kitten to draw a card, fading hope their token, righteous Valkyrie, blink up the- never mind. <laughs> but what if our opponent doesn't scoop? While rare, there are situations where the opponent doesn't concede against this absolutely disgusting amount of value. Like this game where we got a clunky draw but enough interaction to keep our life gain combo opponent from setting up a board presence. They are a bit mana screwed but we end up with only kittens and no permanence to blink on the battlefield. Let's jump in here right when the opponent assembles their infinite combo. Scurry Oak enters the battlefield, Prosperous Innkeeper gains a life, when they gain life, Healord puts a counter on a creature, when Scurry Oak gets a counter, they create a creature token, which makes Prosperous Innkeeper gain another life and repeat this process forever. Luckily, we got a bounce spell to stop all of this. They can still swing in for 4, but now since they can go infinite again next turn, they are probably going to stay in the game until we actually win it, so let's do that. Play Itali. Find two non-creature spells. Unfortunately, we don't have anything else to blink. Itali triggers again. Ooh, double planeswalker. Nice. Too bad we are wasting a lot of kitten triggers here. Let's just fast forward until we hit two creatures. There we are. Displace a kitten and scary oak. Let's let some of these spells resolve so we have something to blink on the battlefield. Oh well, never mind. Genesis Ultimatum will look at the top 5 cards of our library and put all permanents on the battlefield. Well, back in the loop. Legend Rule Itali. Let's see what we hit. Oh, I think we have their infinite combo on the stack now. I kept it looping for another round here, but at some point you have to keep in mind that you have to resolve this entire stack before your timer runs out. To stop the loop, we can just stop targeting Itali with the kittens. Now we let the stack resolve. I got a little carried away here because I assembled the opponent's infinite combo and did this for a while, but with all the triggers from the life gain deck, there's a real chance we time out before reaching the end of this deck. Fast forward and we end up on our last few plus Chandra for 2 mana, cast Bitter Reunion, decline all the kitten triggers, Reunion enters the battlefield, decline this trigger as well, pay 1 mana and sacrifice it to give all creatures haste just in time, swing in with the whole crew and shout out to our opponent for staying in for the ride. Now if you ever find yourself untapping with Displacer Kitten and anything to blink on the battlefield, it's probably gonna be a glorious turn. Let's see what we can do here. Cast Expressive Iteration, Blink Bitter Reunion. When it enters the battlefield, we can discard a card to draw two cards. Iteration gives us an invasion of Ergamon and a land. Play the land, cast the invasion. Kitten triggers, Blink the Reunion again. Discard one, draw two. Invasion creates a treasure, discard one, draw one. And now we can keep up an instant spell to flicker the kitten itself to dodge removal. Oh well, and if they don't have removal, how about we use this Prismari command to create a treasure token and deal 2 damage to their flyer. Kitten triggers, blink the invasion, discard a land. Yeah, they hit us down to 4 here, but at this point, we can just cast Genesis Ultimatum. <laughs> There's an Itali. And uh, here we go. Now contrary to some of my recent videos, this is actually a functional deck. If you decide to play it for yourself, be careful. Once you start the combo, do not put draw spells on the stack if you don't plan on stopping the loop early. Our deck plays only optional card draw or cards that create card advantage without explicitly drawing cards. But the opponent can play whatever they want to. You might get carried away and somewhere along the combo put a card like Kiora Behemoth back on the stack and then minutes later while resolving the stack, trigger her passive ability to draw a card with your entire library on the stack and uh, die. Wait, did you just tap that like button. Oh, sweet. Well, in that case, we gotta have a bonus game.
<laughs> yeah, so there's one more thing about this deck. Let's first mulligan this hand. Oh, this one is fine. Bottom Invasion of Zendikar, play a land, pass the turn. Opponent plays a Snow-Covered Swamp and a Bilious Skull Dweller. Well, I guess they try to poison us to death. Since we drew a land here, I think we just play Invasion of Ergamon, create a treasure, don't discard a card and pass the turn. Tapped land. And another Skull Dweller, swings in for one, poison for one, we draw another land. Let's just cast Chandra here since they can't really attack her if they want to poison us as fast as possible. Plus her to make two mana, use it to cast Bitter Reunion, discard the land, draw two more, pass the turn, swamp. Pestilent Siphoner, swings for two, up to three, so we are corrupted if that's relevant. Ugh, and we draw another land. I spend a bit of time in the tank here, but I think the safest option is to play the Buseju plus Chandra to exile the top card of our library. We can cast it or have a deal two damage to our opponent. Another land, yikes, pass the turn, bloated contaminator, swamp, swings for three, channel Sorkinsan, discard it and create two 1-1 one -one spirit tokens, block the Skull Dwellers, Whisper the draws, the late after blocks, kills the spirit, trade with the dweller, take one. Ooh, an untapped land. <laughs> you know what time it is. Cast Itali. What do we hit? Oh, this should rough their board. Perfect. Infectious Bite to kill their Contaminator and Brotherhood's End to kill the rest. Let's see if they can deal with Itali. Pestilent Siphoner and an Infectious Bite just for the poison counter. Another Itali? Well, don't mind if I do. Oh, shouldn't have played the land here in case we hit a spell that lets us discard a card. Cast Itali. Legend Rule the... Yeah. Probably keep the one that's not summoning sick. Yikes. Oh, when we get punished for playing the land here as well. At least we can kill their creature. No card to discard to the invasion. Pass the turn in shame. Oh, and they just have a land? Well, in that case, if you ever find yourself in this situation, you can pay 9 and a Phyrexian mana to transform Itali into Itali Primal Sickness. An 11-11 Trample Indestructible with whenever Itali Primal Sickness deals combat damage to a player, they get that many poison counters. Turns out, we were the ones winning with poison all along. Wanna see more of my content? Check out last episode where we make our opponent accidentally lose the game. Remember to tap that like button, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.